Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of The Loom Plotters. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, before we even get started, um, I want to say that the, I think two episodes ago, we, we aired a Hodinki rant, right? <laughs> we, we had a little rant about Hodinki, and I, I, everyone seemed very, very enthralled by the story, but... Um, yes, the audio quality on my end was a little shite, as yeah. we say. Um, and that was what, well, by the way, because I was mm. this was in the passion of the moment. I call Ralph to essentially uh, bitch at Hondinki, right? Uh, just very angrily. We wanted to um, catch him in the right yeah. mood. And so I was waiting for my. Uh, I was dropped off in the, like, the industrial area, waiting for my auto body shop to open. And apparently, I thought they opened at 9, turns out they open at 10. So we said, okay, you know, in the heat of this moment, let's record an episode. So I was just on my phone while Ralph was with his proper recording thing. So that's why it didn't sound like our usual stuff. But it was good that we recorded it because, of course, I have calmed down a bit. And then it's just not that much fun. It always has to be in the heat of the moment, right? This is why they say if 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 there's a, a murder Raw. or an accident, yeah. the police officers have to investigate within the, like the next fifteen minutes and interview people. Otherwise, you forget all of the details. <laughs> yes, mm. your brain plays tricks with you. But yeah, this is raw, unfiltered emotion coming. That from was you. yes. So in this spirit, um, I have to say, uh, I'm wearing a very specific watch for the for that occasion. And uh, if you can look here, um. It's nothing. Oh, no. Because Hodinky still has yet yeah. to make up for this issue. Ooh. And um, <clears throat> we'll, I will fill you in on this in a moment, where we've gone to from here. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, I'll let Ralph tell us what he's yeah. wearing, and then we'll go back I to the Hodinky. I am thing. wearing my IWC Mark 20 on the bracelet. But Which, yeah. I have to say, I, I somebody pointed out to me, that mm -hmm. one of the reasons they like the Mark 20 as opposed to the Mark 18 was because of mm -hmm. the XX. And they said it was a very symmetrical, pleasing number. Yes, it is. I mean, there's a lot of other little details that are different, right? I think I, I went through this, right? So the, mm -hmm. yeah. um, the date window is now again white, which actually makes it very symmetrical with the nine on the other side. So it looks balanced. Yeah. They have reduced the size of the... Uh, numbers, I think they pushed the numbers a bit more outside. They have uh, reduced this, the indices a bit. So there's a lot of little things that they have changed. So if you look at the details, especially also the case, everything has been a, gotten a small nip and tuck. So there is, there's a lot of little but, things. But what's funny is somebody did this, this somebody um, did say that it's technically not a pilot's watch. Yeah, it is. It's it, a yeah, apparently yeah. a mishmash correct, of both correct. a field watch and a pilot's watch, mm. right? Which I never knew. I, I just watched a video this morning on this, and uh, it was interesting. So it's what's a flieger, and then what's the other one? The the field watches. What were they called? Did they have a name for them? No, I think they're just called. Are they not watches? called field watches? I think yeah. But I don't know. I mean, they no, they have no good. name actually. Really, that's just I think it's like yeah, pilot well, flieger. Hmm? Yeah, pilot and flieger are the same. No, I right? think I think you're you're absolutely right that it's it is it's it's a bit like this. Um, they try to make this the the submariner of IWC more or less, right? So they're the everyday watch that you can wear to everything. That's why it's not they, too big. It's not too small. Yeah. The Goldilocks. Yeah, that's why they also put the screw down crown. They increase the water resistance and all of this stuff. It's just like it's just like the do everything, go everywhere watch, the Daga. <laughs> yes. yes, other way around. The Gada, the Gada. Gada watch. The Gada okay, watch. all right. Yeah. So now, but um, I have to, I wanted to say something about how Hudinki okay. because I of course yeah, learned too. from I your experience too. and placed an order at Hudinki as well. Yeah, yeah, I was about to put, place another one as well. As long as it's not for expensive <laughs> things. <laughs> but right? they have reduced some of the straps to five dollars. Yes. No, no, no. It gets better. They have I... one dollar straps. No. One dollar. They do. Oh man, I missed that. If you that go one. on Shit. the uh nylon uh, straps. So mm -hmm. essentially, it's a NATO strap that's cut into two pieces, right? Wow. 
Yeah. And those are one dollar currently. Um, they still must have plenty of stock of the that uh, G Shock online ceramics, which no one wants because no one knows what an online ceramic <laughs> even is. Um, and they are now forty nine dollars, I think. And even then, I'm just like, nah. Uh, <laughs> like no, I, I ordered this. I don't know. I, I I know I shouldn't have, but I did order these. Um, what is it called? The oh man, the Timex Field Watch thing. The water the, uh, That's not field. It's it's a diver. It's, it's oh, okay. but it's sold out. No, I thought it was sold out. Uh, I checked yesterday. I got one. I mean, at least I think I got one. But uh, <laughs> maybe they they found another crate full of them. Yeah. But uh, I thought they were sold out. No. Yesterday I checked. What was it? I think yeah. No, I think I got one. So that was a f few days ago. I mean, obviously nothing shipped. I think I I ordered in on Thursday or so, but so far nothing has shipped. Yeah, so. it's sold out now. So what's left here, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, in the entire shop, they have now one. Oh, finally, the G Shock is sold out. Uh, they have two things left. Three. A few of these uh, mouse or whatever muishond. Prints, which I don't understand why you want to print from a flashlight company, but sure, okay. Um, <laughs> but they look cool after seven. They do, they do. I'm still not gonna buy one. Yeah. And they do have the Sambolo two-piece nylon watch strap for one, for one dollar. dollar, and then the Hodinki magazine for four dollars. Yeah, that's, that's also roughly a very good price. Volume that's it. 12. I don't see anything I don't think else. I even got received my volume twelve. Weird, huh? Yeah, I don't think you're going to receive it either. <laughs> Frankly speaking, um, I don't think it's coming. Yeah. But I, all right. So my point of my story is. Uh, by the mm. way, uh, did you you only got the the Timex, or did you buy anything else? Um, the Timex and four straps. That's what I bought. Okay, you didn't get the G-Shock. No, no. Interesting. Why not? No, no. I have enough G-Shocks. I recently uh, worn a couple of my G-Shocks, and I thought. Because I was thinking about buying another G-Shock for whatever Which one? weird reason. No, it was the um, the light blue version of the metal carbon G-Shock, um, the oh, round oh. one. No, no, no. I th I, I'm still looking at two G-Shocks. I want, I like mm. the carbon one. The what? The carbon, the yes. GW, whatever, whatever, carbon. Mm. I had it on my wrist. It's, it's uh, insane. It weighs like it's, nothing. Yeah, and it, it's but of course it's carbon. It's super, not cheap. super hard. I think it's like eight thousand dirhams. Yeah, but I, I had this one. It was, I think, I don't know. It was. I really, I had the metal one. I sold it again, the round one, um, in steel. And I think I don't know. I was just looking at it, and then the I looked Casio at my watch, um, or? Um, at my no, G-Shock no, watch G -Shock. box, and I thought, nah, you should not buy another one. You have enough. So. So you buy the Timex. Um, I have a friend, mm. by the way, who uh, Much ordered a bunch of things on Hodinki as well. <clears throat> uh, he ordered the Timex as well, the G-Shock, I think a um, Swatch. And I think like nine days went by, not a word from Hodinki. Really? And then he got a FedEx notification that he has an incoming package from Georgia. And he looked through all of his emails. He looked through the... Um, the spam folder, everything. Yeah. Zero. Hodinki never once sent an email. Okay. And it was shipped. So so keep an eye on that. Interesting. But on the other side, Hodinki did reach out to me. And maybe I should read this okay. for the, so I don't get anything wrong. Um, I, I'll tell you, there was a little back and forth. So for those of you listening, it has now been a week and a half mm -hmm. um, since the great Grand Seiko incident <laughs> of 2024. Um <laughs> Let me see what Hodinki said. So I have, I emailed them obviously right away. I read the email or I said the email out to them last time um, and I received zero response. Then mm -hmm. I sent another email um, saying, it has now been another 24 hours since I have, uh, I have received any response from you because the first time they said, we'll look into it. Yeah. Um, and it's been four days of zero response from your end and blah, blah, blah. So... I asked for the credit card chargeback. That was the day we recorded the episode. Yeah. Then uh, they responded, we appreciate your response. We apologize for the delay. However, please note, we only operate during weekdays. Our team is actively working on your inquiry and rest assured that an update will be provided. 
naturally nothing, right? Mm -hmm. I said, well, when a $3,500 watch goes missing, I would appreciate some urgency, especially um, when you falsify import documents and uh, force individuals to pay duties on items that you didn't even ship. Um, And then on 5th of September, four days ago, I received an email. Yeah. We appreciate your patience. Upon investigation, it was found that due to an internal error, the system read that the watch was included in the shipment, but in reality, it was never sent out. We're actively working with our team to ensure that the correct refund amount will be issued. So they're basically saying you, you, you cannot get the watch? They, yeah, the they, they only didn't even solution mention. they have is refund. Correct. That's what they yeah. said. And I told them essentially... Um, don't bother. Don't bother. Um, because I have already gotten the money back from the credit card company. And essentially, you're more than welcome to deal with the credit card company. Mm. And uh, there was no response since then. So that was four or five days ago now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, being that I was an impatient individual, I and this is what we're, today's topic is, and this is what got me into thinking, what is today's topic? So I set out to find the same exact watch again, because I I started thinking to myself, how am I going to, you know, I sold two Grand Seikos. I want this watch. This is what I had my heart set on. Maybe I can find another one around the same price. Mm -hmm. So I started looking around and I ran into quite a few red flags um, in places like Chrono and eBay and other online sites. Mm. And that's what we're going to talk about today is, you know, kind of what are some of these red flags? But before we get into this, um, I just want to update you on the whole timeline. I did find an alternative watch. I uh, It was listed on Chrono for $4,000, I believe, for $4,100. I made them a very cheeky offer, mm-hmm. which I thought was very cheeky at $3,500. They accepted. Nice. Um, the offer had 24-hour window. Mm -hmm. This was the day we recorded that. So I was thinking to myself, you know what? I'll give him 24 hours, Hodinki, to respond because maybe they have the watch somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and then we waited 24 hours. I sent the payment and of course, Hodinki didn't respond. So I paid and I got the watch. Now, I do truly believe I'm somehow cursed because (laughs) um, that watch was shipped out on the same day. It was supposed to be delivered on Saturday. It was not. Then it was rescheduled for today. It was not delivered again. It's rescheduled now. I've called them. This is UPS this time, not FedEx. Okay. And uh, they say now tomorrow it will come. So I don't know what Mm. on earth is going up. And I had two Aramex packages also both delayed. So now essentially the last five packages I've received, every single one have been delayed. Interesting. So maybe I'm just cursed. Yeah. But nonetheless, I got a decent deal on the same watch I wanted. That's kind of the end of the story. Um, I did... Uh, ask Hodinki for about a thousand extra dirhams for my troubles, right? I told him, here's how much I paid for import duties. Yep. And I want all of it back. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, you should. Which is about a thousand dirhams extra. I paid about 13, 1400 dirhams for the import duties on the Grand Seiko and about a thousand on the Oris. So I asked for all of it. Um, then, so that would cover the difference in the two watches prices because it was a thousand dirhams more. Mm hmm. Now, what's funny is, guess who Guess who messaged me yesterday? Night. FedEx. Oh, okay. And apparently they may, just maybe, will refund the import duties for the missing watch. Oh. Which then so would did, mean did, did, then, I would did, be at a profit of 1300 <laughs> Well, then maybe Houdinki says like, well, FedEx has promised us to refund you. So maybe that's because. Oh, they because, don't know this. Maybe. I'm not going to tell them this. No, but but Houdinki might, might have initiated that, no? Maybe they have updated no, 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 their no, no, shipping no, no, documents. No, 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 I've been talking to them. No, this is because mm. they asked me, because apparently they misunderstood what was going on. Right. As they would do. And they thought that there was a um, second package maybe tied together. Right. Okay. And then that box went missing. All right. So okay. they, they said, we did an investigation. We couldn't find your package. Right. Which is what we thought maybe, maybe they had tied mm. two boxes together. And they said, we couldn't find it. And then I said, Ed, so you'll refund the duties? And they said, oh, that's a whole other department and let's transfer this request to them. And and then of course a week goes by and that's when they came back to me. So let's see what happens. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, Hodinki doesn't know anything and I doubt they listen to our podcast. So <laughs> in, in the grand scheme of things, knows, I would like 
to come out ahead of this to make yeah. up for all of my hairs pulled. So uh, yeah, I would say a thousand, thousand five hundred dirhams in the positive would be all right with me. Yeah, why not? Let's I see. mean, look, so much of trouble, <clears throat> so much of it was hair a lot. pulling. You had to buy the watch somewhere else. All of this stuff is annoying, right? And you have also the the time you had without the watch, right? Yes, that was a heartbreaking yep, moment yep, for me. Yep. Yes, so it's 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 uh, it's troublesome. So, based on that experience, what is the main topic of our our discussion? So, today? Th there was two things that happened simultaneously. Um, one was a friend of mine had been looking for a Monaco, uh, a Steve McQueen Monaco, for a long time. Yep. Um, he does not know anything about watches. Um, he just knew that I liked watches. Mm -hmm. So he asked me. He said, um, "I would like this watch." Do you know how I can go about buying one? And I said, well, you could go to the Tag Heuer dealer and buy one. He's like, yeah, they're like 36, or 32,000 dirhams. And Correct. I was like, eesh, that's a little bit much for that. And I said, I could, mm. I would guess you could buy it for around half that if we tried. So he said, okay, you know, let's do that. So I was looking around and the first thing I sent him, by the way, this was quite a while ago, was uh, the first day of Hodinkee's fire sale. They had for 11K one of the Hoyer Monaco's in blue. So that right. would have been right up his alley, but by the, by the time he clicked on the link, it had already been sold. Wow. So that didn't work out. And then <clears throat> I told him, okay, here's a few places. You look for, you know, look at Timepiece 360. You look at Watchbox. You look at here, you know, these sites and just kind of browse through them, see if they have one. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it astounded me that, you know, we know this stuff, but an average person does not know who to trust. Yeah. They don't know what website to go to, um, you know, where to look. That is and true. And especially tenfold, they do not understand Timepiece 360 auctions because that even I barely understand. <laughs> so that's another, you know, thing. And of course, that's where you ended up buying the watch was with the auction. Yeah. So uh, you have to, you have to <clears throat> consider with all auctions, even the ones from the big groups, the Philips, the... Um, Christie's and all of these guys who make these big auctions house or the big auction houses and the smaller ones, they usually don't guarantee anything. Right? So yeah. even the big ones saying we cannot guarantee the authenticity of every single part on it. We can look at a watch and saying, okay, yeah, we think that's authentic and that's not fake or stolen or something like that. But even that, yeah. sometimes they can't 100% um, promise. I, 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 by the way, I listened mm. to one and there was a stolen watch auction by Christie's that yeah. was stolen from, uh, who was it? Uh, one of the big, uh, I don't know if it was Picasso's family or something. Oy, okay. um, yeah, yeah. And then Picasso, I think it was Picasso or one of these, I don't know, somebody on this kind of level. And then... Uh, It was the the Picasso's daughter or something shows up and says, no, no, that watch was stolen from me like 20 years ago. And so it ended up wow, getting back to the family. <laughs> But Christie's, and she said, well, mm. you know, you're selling this as my father's watch. Or, but you never once bothered to contact us and ask us for provenance. Because had you, we would have told you it was stolen. Yeah. And they had the police reports and everything. And basically it showed that it was the negligence of the auction house, whether it was Christie's or Sotheby's, one of those two. Um, they on purpose didn't contact the family because they feared that it was stolen. Yeah. So, if, so as long know, as they don't contact. Very good. It's uh, very good. If, if, if you know, you, you probably think plausible deniability. Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> exactly. We didn't know. Exactly. But if you would have contacted, you would have known. Yeah. And that's why you sometimes, you know, you just hold your hands over your ears and say, like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. So one of the, one important thing is. Oh, no. It was what's his faces. I'm sorry. It was John Lennon's. John Lennon. It was John Lennon. Lennon's okay. Patek Philippe. And it was Lennon's daughter Beatles, who had no interest in the watch, by the Picasso, way. Picasso, same, same. Yeah, something else. It was, it was that level. I mean, it was the same level of, of, of importance, artistry. right? Mm, okay. And uh, and it was kind of actually the same level of artistry, as you say. They're both kind of out of their mind, <laughs> crazy people. Um, and apparently it was stolen by their doorman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the doorman said, well, the wife, Yoko, told me I could have whatever I wanted as a payment. 
for mm, something. Okay. Or was it the driver or the doorman or something? And so technically, but then the police said, do you have any signed paperwork for this? Of course you don't. No, she yeah. told me. So, and apparently Yoko didn't notice the watch was stolen for 20 years. Yeah, well. Or the family, I should say. But anyway, it was a Patek, very rare. S See, sold at auction or at listed that, at auction. At that time, you know, also the, the, the prices for these watches was, sure, it was luxury back then as well, but it wasn't that astronomically high. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Time. So, so, I mean... Yeah, but I think this is one of the, the very important point. If you buy your first watch, right, and you decide not to just walk into a boutique or any kind of watch store and buy a watch from an authorized dealer, but you're buying your watch pre-owned somewhere or in the gray market, that is one of the shortcomings that you have to think about. If you buy a watch that is so-called, but what we call in our in the industry, called naked, right? That means it doesn't have papers or a mm -hmm, box. Mm -hmm. uh, from from my perspective, a box doesn't matter. But the papers, the warranty card, um, that is usually or can be an indication that the watch is either flipped very fast because somebody doesn't want that. To appear in this name or something, even though that doesn't really make so much sense, or it is, it could be, of course, a stolen watch. Are all so, watches without papers mm, stolen? Absolutely no, of not. not. People no. lose their stuff all the time. But the likelihood that it is stolen is bigger. Can there be stolen so, watches with papers as well? Absolutely. Um, also, that can happen. <laughs> so. But this this became a little bit more complicated because I just googled this. Mm. It had gone through the auctions twice. Right. So in 2023, it was going to the auction the second time. Mm -hmm. But in 2004, um, the previous owner, which was an Italian collector, uh, sold or bought, I should say, that watch um, for something like $600,000. Uh, um, and now it was estimated at around $11 million. Jesus. And it was yep. a Tiffany signed um, but the... per perpetual calendar chronograph. So yep. it's kind of like the end all be all of Patek, right? Yeah. yeah so, so anyway. should we should we summarize? If you buy a watch at an auction, you can't be sure it's not stolen. Apparently, you can't yep. be sure um, about the condition of the watch, other than what you can see. Right? Some mm -hmm. auction houses will say, "Well, it works." That doesn't mean, you know, it takes... It holds, it keeps time? It doesn't know that, it, you don't know if it keeps time, you don't know if it needs a service, so you should actually calculate that in, in your price that you buy, if the watch is an older watch, a vintage watch. Anything that is older than five years probably might need a service, depending on what kind of watch it is. Maybe not, but you don't know that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the danger of these watches from auction. But for example, Timepiece 360 here, if you buy directly from them, from their shop, yeah, then yeah. you get a two-year warranty from them, which is one part of why you can buy pre-owned pretty carefree because then they have actually opened the watch, they have serviced it if it needed service, and they give you a warranty for two years on this pre-owned purchase, which is then a, a, a very nice um, worry-free purchase for a pre-owned watch. I yes, think. and it goes beyond that because if the watch, you end up, let's say you do your auction, right? And uh, you go back and you want to, you know, generally you just pay what, 10%, 15% at the beginning. But then if you go to pick up the watch and it's not what it's said to have been or there's some damage or scratches or something, then you can start, either reneging on the sale, on the auction itself, or you can say, okay, well, I would like you to fix X, Y, Z because it's not as described. And they will do that for you as well. Yeah, well, if, if it's not as described. But otherwise, they always say, well, you can go and see the watch for a week, right? Because the auction mm -hmm. runs for a week and then you can of, of, always go in and, and have a look at the watch, put it on your wrist, Correct. see if it really works for you. So that's a pretty good, but nice service as well. So you can really check it out before you place your bids, right? Yep. Which they always have usually during the auctions that you have the viewing time, right? 
Yeah, so that's one way of buying a watch. It's auction, or then now these what what you just said. But once again, in this auction, we dealers. need to mention mm -hmm. that it wasn't that easy. What well, was not so easy. even in this auction, the auction itself, even in the auction, uh, we had issues. So technical issues. Technical issues. Yeah, but yeah. That so happens. that's it's also not problem, as so yeah. it is, yeah. but it's not as easy for a newbie to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And I just can only imagine if he was doing this, you know, by himself, he would have been a sketched out and B just said, "Nah, I'm good," and I just walked away. It, um, it can be sometimes, yeah. So um, explanations are very important, right? That you get uh, taken by the hand and just walk through how an auction would would work and what you have to do and what it all means. The you know. Max in bids, this case, what yeah. had happened, by the way, is he put in his maximum bid and then somebody had bid on his maximum bid, right? But not above it, just within his range that he bid Correct, for. Yeah. And he got an email saying that you've been outbid and hmm. he but thought you were he But you were 100% positive that he had clicked on the max bid button yes, because yes, there are yes, two yes. buttons, right? One is no, just he bid, had it. It was 16,000 he put in for the max bid, right. ended up winning the watch for fifteen. Um, so clearly it never exceeded yeah, so that. So might have been a technical issue then. It, no, apparently what Timepiece360 said was there was just a, a, f a generic email that gets sent out. Oh, okay. Every time, if you're bidding on a watch, okay. whether it's taken away from you or not, whether it's, you know, taken over, I should say, by the new bidder or not, you get the same form email. And it happens to say you've been outbid. Mm, okay. But in essence, it should say somebody has bid on your lot. Right. Or something like that. You are this. still the, 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 the... Yeah, you should have two emails, but they only have the one, right? Bidder, the, so yeah. if I have 9K and somebody bids 10, I've been outbid. Hmm. But if I am at 9K, I, my max bid is 15 and somebody bids 10, then it's still me winning. And you get the same email either way. Okay. What are the other ways of how to buy a watch? If you don't right, want to go to so... the auctions, you don't want to buy in the boutique itself, and you, you have then pre-owned watch dealers so there, there's Again, a bunch of pre-owned watch pre pre dealers let's, let's, let's talk about pre-owned watch dealers okay. or these, the, the gray market there's a couple of them right there's, there's there's quite a few yeah let's let's differentiate them into gray market and pre-owned dealers because to a certain extent there is of course an overlap because mostly both are doing the same thing but there are some dealers that are not selling you pre-owned watches technically they are all pre-owned because you're not buying them from the boutique. So that means they have changed hands, but they're new. But the gray Correct. market had sometimes this, this... For instance, the Grand Seiko yeah. that I bought did not come from Hodinkee. Yes. But it's still stickered and wrapped. Yeah. So it's new, but it's not really But is it new, from, right? a, from a dealer or is it from a, from yeah, a, from per, a private person? Dealer, dealer. Dealer. Who had four of them, by the way. So what happened for... And that for, will for, get me into that later. <laughs> yeah, for a long period of time was when... when um, when watch companies used to sell to authorized dealers, the authorized dealers had to take a certain amount of watches, even if they couldn't sell them all, right? Mm -hmm. So what they did sometimes is when they were sitting on inventory, they went to shops that have a big audience like Yoma Shop and AuthenticWatches.com and all of these big online platforms that can sell or move a lot of product at a discount. They went to them and said, okay, here is 20 of this watch model, and I need to get rid of them in one go. Then they sold them for a very deep discount, maybe even at cost price, to just move this inventory out so that they can get new inventory in. Yeah. These guys then would sell this on with a big and huge discount to other customers. A bigger discount. So for than instance, get let's in say you have a twenty thousand dirham watch. Yeah. Cost on the twenty thousand dirham watch is let's say ten, just for make it easy. Ten. Half. That's okay. Mm. Um, so they sell them to Joma Shop for 10. Yeah. And then Joma Shop sells it to you for 12. Correct. Something like that. Something like that. And you get a massive discount over at retail. Yeah. Joma Shop is making money. Dealer is getting rid of their watches because they want new inventory mm. and they can only move it if they, you know, get. Yeah. And otherwise it could have taken years, mm. right? Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it is like that. Sometimes it's a, it's, it's a mix of both and all of this stuff. But this is then you get the watch, but you might not get a. Um, of course, Joma Shop cannot sign the warranty card, right? Because they're not an authorized dealer for these brands. That that means that most of the times you do not get that kind of warranty, the manufacturer warranty on these watches. In exchange, you get them very cheap. Some watches 
don't care some watch companies. They're saying, well, the, the warranty is with the watch. You still have your warranty. But some people are saying, if it's not, you know, signed and filled out the warranty card, then there is no warranty, right? So you have to see this with a gray market. There is a bit of a risk that you might not have the warranty. Do you need the warranty? Well, you only know that it once depends. you have it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So this is so, kind of interesting as mm. well. But once again, you end up buying a watch for a lot cheaper. So Correct, sometimes yes. it's not worth it. So mm. I noticed this, for instance, uh, with my JLC, when I bought the Reverso, um, at that time, uh, it was 28,000 dirhams roughly for the um, Reverso at retail. Yeah. And Joe Shop was selling it for 27. And JLC has an eight-year warranty. Yes. And I'm pretty sure an eight-year warranty would be worth more than a thousand dirhams, right? Mm. So sometimes you have to use your better judgment. But if it's let's say thousand, uh, we'll say a thousand dollar Hamilton, yeah, and they're selling it for five hundred dollars. At that point, like, I don't think you're going to gain that much out of a warranty. True, and especially, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right, probably not. So. So that's the that's the that's a gray market. That is, these are the retailers that are selling only new watches, right? No, no. Even Joma Shop sells used now. Yeah, now, but that's so that's then that's then the pre-owned business, Stock. basically. Yeah. yeah. So pre-owned is then of course different. That means they bought watches that have been maybe worn, that have been but owned by private we persons. Hmm? Yeah. So that means there is certainly some wear and tear on the watch. You have to make sure it's complete. Usually good pre-owned dealers will tell you exactly the condition of the watch, have very detailed photos. I personally love to look at these images. When you look at the images, for example, on these platforms like Chrono24, where there's a lot of dealers and private persons, if you buy from Japan, the way of how detailed the photos are and how in, in detail and magnified you see any little scratch on the watch because they want to make sure that you know that there is something not 100% okay with the watch. I once bought um, a, a watch there, a Cartier, for my wife and the dealer sent us multiple messages and said, but you know that there is only this amount of, of links in the bracelet. Right. So the maximum that you, you know, wrist size that you can put the watch on is this. And we said, yes, we understand. My wife has very small wrists, so it's good. No problem. She can wear it. We probably need it to still take one out. Right. And he said, yeah, but it's really, really small. So he really, you know, it, it went, this discussion went on for two days and he really tried. And, and also there are scratches here and also there are scratches there. And he's like, yeah, wait. Yes, we understand. We just want to have the watch, right? Yeah. But it, it, he was really super, super cautious and telling us all the little details and sent extra pictures. And, and we didn't ask for it, right? We said, it's fine. We can have it polished if we want to, right? So it's it's not a problem. But yeah, it was it was really hilarious of how he really wanted to make sure that we know exactly what we're getting so that there is no return because he said that's very complicated. Because they're exporting this without taxes yeah. and all of this stuff. So, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it is. It is. So, uh, now, so there's a bunch of these types of dealers. We hmm. won't even go into Chrono yet, but we'll talk about dealers in general. We have Watchfinder, Watchbox. We have, you know, locally like Timepiece 360. We have a bunch of these random ones throughout, you know, the Dubai Gold Souk and the Abu Dhabi Gold Souk. There's a ton of and they're these. not random. There. Some of them are. are World famous luxury souk. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Luxury yeah. souk is world famous. Yeah. So there's quite Come a few of these. There. Once again, you don't know if it's used or new, but they're secondhand watches in terms of someone owned them before, right? Yeah. Um, now, these are all legitimate sources, but you still have to be careful with some of them. Um, for instance, uh, we've had stories of some uh, you know, individuals, no names will be named. Going to a place, being told that a Rolex is entirely authentic, and then finding out essentially that, well, it's not entirely the case because it had a date wheel that was too yellow for its age, and we had a dial that was too old for its age, and it was over-polished, and there was all kinds of other issues, right? So you still need to be 
aware of what you're buying at the end of the day, which means if you don't know, you should take someone with you that does know. Yeah. So the the good the good dealers usually um, announce this and tell you that. Um, good dealers know, for example, certain certain. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dials say it's not about certain, the dealer. I'm gonna go against the grain. It's not about the dealer. It's no? about the salesperson at the dealer. Yeah. Okay. But but yeah. Sometimes it's a one man one man show. There's a couple of of dealers who are very open and transparent and saying like, yeah, well, this is not the original dial. See, I had my own um, Datejust two that I had once. I didn't change the dial, but I did change the um, the bezel, bezel. Right. So I had both. I did the same I, thing. I bought the extra. White and I took both bezels bezel. to, when I sold it, I told, gave yeah. them both bezels exactly. and say, you can I did the do whatever thing. you want. Said, I, I bought this original bezel, white gold <laughs> bezel, aftermarket. Um, well, not aftermarket. I bought it, but it is an original one, but I bought it from the market, basically. Um, but it originally didn't come with the white gold one. So, and that's that's why in the papers, it will it might have a different indication there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so same thing with me. Yeah. But and again, this is the transparency that you then expect. And then it's fine. And you know what you're buying. And that's why that is good. But on the other hand, if it changed hands a lot, if you know it's not documented somewhere, then you might not know. You, you just think, oh, that's a great deal. And usually the biggest advice is if it's too good to be true, it is. So be careful. Very rarely uh, there are super duper yes. deals. Especially, Within the realm of possibility, right? Especially nowadays, there's so many super fakes, super replicas out there. It is very, very tough to identify if you're not a used one. There's a, um, a very good YouTube channel um, from a watch dealer. I don't know what they're called, watch something, um, where there is a watchmaker, German watchmaker in the US who lives there. And he is explaining of how they find all of these different uh, now here's another top tip for this yeah, so um, the way that i avoided the issue of fakes mm -hmm. was when i bought both my wife's uh, op yeah. and my explorer one mm -hmm. they were brand new hot off the press which means the fakers didn't have enough time to make fakes of those items yeah. yet and one way you could do this you could figure this out is if you're looking at a watch, looking at buying it used, for instance, and you don't trust the dealer you're buying from, look at whether fakes of that watch, that specific watch exists. There's tons of forums and the forums will all, with, all discuss differences. So for instance, when my Explorer 136 millimeter came out, Rolex had changed the lug size from 20 millimeters to 19 all of the old cases, the Oyster Perpetuals and the Explorers, previously 36 millimeters, had 20 millimeter lugs. Mm. They would have had to develop an entirely new case for this watch. And of course, the fakers are lazy. It takes time to do this. So at the very beginning, they started manufacturing quote unquote fakes of this, but it was with the wrong lug width. And yeah, that they was used to fairly easy to tell. Cases that they still had, yeah. Sure. Um, for my wife's watch, for the Celebration OP, it was the other thing. It was the fact that it was the most unpopular size. Mm. It was the 31 mm. Everyone wanted 36 or 40. Therefore, all the fakers had 100% targeted the larger sizes. Yeah. And we couldn't even find one fake 31 mm size dial. Yeah. Because we assumed the watch was real. We just then maybe somebody swapped the dial in right mm. but if they don't exist on that fake market then yeah. they're fairly much safe then the other thing that you can do is if you're buying and this is the next one um if you're buying from a from a from a dealer where you have warranty you don't have a problem if he, if that is misrepresented then you have somebody to go to but if you're yep. going from if you're buying from a private person then of course you have to be careful for for, for a lot of other things and then you can go to some of these places, some of these pre-owned dealers who actually offer authentication services. Yes, They'll probably run you like 500 dirhams. But yeah, yes, it costs you, could, you yeah. some some kind of money, but you have the peace of mind. They will take the watch. Mm -hmm. They will go in there with a, with a microscope. They are not in there, but sometimes they can open the watch in order to, to look into if it's needed. But generally, they just use a microscope to, to look through and either the transparent case back or just look at the dial. And they will show you on the big, big monitor all the details saying like, okay, this watch was already serviced. This watch has handling 
scratches on the hands or on the dial or dust or whatever might be there, they will tell you. They will also know if the dial is the correct one, if the hands are the correct one, if, if anything is off, right, on this watch, if it's a very old one. Um, sometimes it's just normal service. Some watches get serviced and they get place, uh, parts re replaced. Sometimes these, these parts are of a newer design, even though the watch is older, which is normal and is not bad, right? Because what we said before, Franken watch, when you have different a different dial in it, or as you said, a different date wheel or so that doesn't match. Sometimes that has been a watch has been, you know, put together out of different Yeah. Broken but generally ones in those cases, so. um, we know for a fact if something is older than what it's meant to be, it's not right. Mm -hmm. Newer right. is a different story because it, watches get serviced and broken parts get replaced with newer parts. Yeah. And there's lots of uh, cases of this. Um, there was just a, a YouTube video I watched the other day where a guy had a, uh, a day chest. Mm -hmm. And they said, here are your options for dials because we're replacing your dial. And most of the time you don't get a say in whether they're replacing your dial or not. They say, you want the service? You're getting a new dial. And they gave him like, I don't know, 10 options of dial colors to choose from. And he got to choose... Yeah. And apparently this just happened. So Rolex, this was an older one with the tapestry dial, which your wife has, right? Or the no tapestry or linen? Linen. Which one does she have? They so this was a tapestry dial. dial. Yeah. This was a day just with a tapestry. And Rolex still stocks brand new tapestry dials from the 80s and 70s, which is kind of cool, right? So they got a box. They didn't have the exact color he had before, but they said you can choose either this or this and then put it together right so most people would say oh well that's not correct but if it's, yeah it, it so for, for vintage for vintage collectors very often it's 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 the period corrected correctness right so they yeah. it's a bit of a challenge some people say okay i want a vintage watch but I, if it can look like a brand new one i'm happy and some people say no i just want it exactly how it was delivered back in the 60s 70s yeah Obviously, two different opinions about things, right? So neither, neither is, is wrong or right, but it's it's just uh, what do you like, right? That's the important thing there. Um, I had a friend of mine who w w was going to buy a Patek Philippe Nautilus, and he went to the authentication service with the dealer who actually sold the watch, and he said, it's no problem, we can go and have it authenticated. And he did. And they then actually saw <clears throat> that there's a couple of things, like a, a few screws that were opened. Um, you know, you could see the marks of the of the screwdriver and some other little bits and pieces where they said, no, this actually has, the hands have been removed at least once. Um, don't know what happened, but it is actually a watch that has been opened or serviced or whatever. And the dealer said it's brand new. So there was no deal. So he yeah, actually walked a, away because he said for brand new, the price is different as for used. In this case, the watch was open. Something happened to the watch. The buyer, so my friend, was not comfortable shelling out that much money for it and said, no, nope, I'm not going to buy this. I want it brand new. And so eventually bought something else. Which has obviously happened to a normal, you know, a lot of pe mm. uh, people and places uh where you find one of the most common ones is if it's not a screw in case back, but a screwed down case back, um, then uh, you see scratch marks, screw in, screw down. It's not the same thing because you always screw it down. No, they're separate things. <laughs> so one of them. Oh, you mean one is, is with screws screw and in. one is where the entire case back is? Exactly. Is, which is I don't know which one is which. I don't know. Which one is which? I don't know. All right. Let's, let's, that's what they're called. I just don't know which one is which. <laughs> so one of them is the entire case back screws in, right? Yeah, to the case itself. Mm -hmm. You can use a different type of tool to do that. Um, that one usually doesn't leave much marking. However, there's one that is with screws. Like an AP Royal Oak is held together with those iconic screws that you see on the bezel. And they're taken out from behind, right? Yes. So if you so the, are the screw heads are actually on the back. Exactly. Of the watch, yeah. Um, but it, with these flathead screws, generally you can see some marring from the screwdriver. Yeah, I mean, however tiny they are, you will see something. Yeah. Especially if it was 
taken apart incorrectly or by someone yeah. who was well, not yeah knowing I mean, what if you doing. have the absolute correct screwdriver then technically they should not leave any yeah. marks but yeah but even then, you, you, you might see. be able to see something with it. With a, I mean, you could see this if you have a bracelet with screw in links as well, right? You can just kind of take a loop to that and see if there's any mm -hmm. markings. And generally, there is. Even if Rolex does it on, you know, the Rolex watches at the service center, it's still going to show. Um, so that's one way you could tell that there was something not quite right there. But if it was coming from the factory, they generally are covering up these screws, for instance, with some uh, seller tape or whatever they call it, and then. They never make contact. The screwdriver never makes contact with the screw. Therefore, you can't see any markings. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, what, what, what we are basically saying is if, if you find a shop uh, or online, if you're buying online directly from a private person um, by eBay, on the, for example. That's the hardest one. Yeah. I think that is the hardest one to deal with. There is. There is a, now, eBay offers the authentication service in some countries. I don't think they offer this here yet. But no. But then they it don't. would go. Uh, to an authentication service first, they would make sure the watch is as described and then send it out from you with the authentication documentation from eBay. It costs a bit extra, Once but again, it's good. The question is, do you trust some random guy at eBay? I mean, sure, he's a trained watch guy, <laughs> but we've seen such huge mistakes that I don't think this guy knows. And then once again, he's authenticating, or I don't know how many people there are. They're authenticating no, every brand people, and yeah. every time and uh, every type of watch. And I just don't think they have the credibility, the knowledge, the know-how, or the eye. I think they had some good, figure good, this out. good results. I think obviously ramping this up is not easy. So then obviously there were mistakes made, but uh, in general, I think they're doing an okay job at least to make sure that in, you don't Exactly. Get... In general, they make yeah. Uh, they do an okay job. Yeah. Um, it depends on what you're buying as well. Yes. You know, don't trust them 100%. But yeah, on a, on, a, on a date just, yeah, I'm pretty sure they can figure it out. Yeah. But if you're buying some ridiculously complicated, uh, um, you know, I don't even know what kind of watch. Something that's, that's rare, that's hard to come by, uh, especially if it's something vintage, then I think you have some issues. So, for instance, I just heard recently about these... Uh, um, small Rolexes. I don't know if you've heard of them called Commandos. No. They were in the 80s, I believe. So uh, they were 34 millimeter um, hand wound oyster cases. Mm -hmm. They were essentially an Explorer, an Oyster Perpetual, something along that line. Um, and they were marked as Rolex Commando. And they were not self winding, they were manual wind. And Rolex sold these. Directly to Abercrombie and Fitch, who were the resellers of these watches, which I think is also kind of cool because those of us um, that know what Abercrombie and Fitch is it now is like a you know now it's a kind of yeah, a fast it's, it's a fashion mo whatever you want modern, to be, cheap fashion modern, brand modern fashion yeah but, but it back was in a... the day they used to be a proper outfitter they would sell correct you know hunting clothes and gear fishing Outdoor whatever you want wear, yeah. safari yeah. gear and they would also sell watches and one of them was of course this rolex commando and the other one was that we're the very famously was sold was the uh the hoyer um wayfair or wayfair when a uh, sea seafarer yeah the seafarer the one mm -hmm. that hodinkee just reissued again yeah seafarer seafarer and the wayfarers are the ray-ban sunglasses mm -hmm. but nonetheless it's kind of cool but anyway are they going to know what this is? Does eBay know what this is? No, of course not. So are to they going to be able extent. to authenticate? I think, I think nah. some some might. Um, it depends which country you are in, but um, they they supposed to make sure that it's at least they do some research, right? I mean, how much time do they have to do that for each watch is a different Who question. Knows? Do they know everything? No, for sure not. If it's a very obscure five pieces watch, that that is actually correct. So they might have also some false negatives, right? When they're saying, oh, yeah. this is not authentic and it actually was. Um, so this can happen. But if you buy something really, you know, obscure, then <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. To a certain extent, yeah, yeah. but this would not be um, your first watch purchase. Now, usually. I'll give you some examples because I eBay was the first place that I went to for my Grand Seiko, and I'll tell you some of the red flags that came up in eBay. So, first and foremost, I found like ten of them listed, right? Um, and I I've been shopping on eBay for a very, very, very long time, probably for over twenty years now. So it's I know what's going on generally in eBay. I know how to shop the sellers. Um, 
So the best thing, one of the best things, best ways to weed out a bad seller is generally communication. What type of responses are they giving you? Do they sound knowledgeable? Do they know what, you know, what they're talking about? Um, so for instance, a lot of these people, I sent an email and I or a message and I said, are you willing to ship to the UAE? That was the first thing. Half of them came back and said, we don't know how, or we're not willing to do so. So that eliminates a large quantity of your sellers. So don't buy something without knowing that they'll ship to you first. Secondly, um, I found one guy who seemed legitimate. Mm. And so I started messaging with him. And the first thing he told me is he had more than one of these watches. Yeah. And I was like, mm, okay, fine. Maybe you bought a couple in the sale and <laughs> are trying to resell them. Sure. Um, I asked him how much he wants. He said he wanted $4,000 shipped to UAE. And I said, okay, all right. This is something we could probably work with. So I was had that as a backup because then I went over to Chrono and I found one seller. And by the way, always check what else that seller is selling. Chances are if they're selling um, nothing but watches from Hodinkee, which is what this one guy was selling, including one, uh, um, what was it, a Unimatic specifically made for Hodinkee friends and family, which then got me a little red flag because I thought to myself, it's brand new in box, which means generally he was probably the first owner, which then means he was probably either friends or family. Mm -hmm of Hodinkee, which I then thought, what about my missing watch? And then I thought, this watch could be my missing watch. And he's selling it on eBay, which is, I'm guessing where it would end up if they would have actually, in the shipping process, pocketed a watch and took it somewhere, right? Pocketed or so, sold elsewhere where they just didn't keep the inventory we don't know we don't know we don't know and that's exactly. the end of it at the end of the day this is what i was thinking is this is clearly a hodinky employee all he was selling was hodinky stuff and he had this specific hodinky friends and family watch which mm. was one of 150 yeah. and it said on the back not for sale yeah so i'm like that's very sketchy so nonetheless um it ended up being so this sketchy i got a little sketched out for some reason i kept this as a backup but i got sketched out and then i was luckily so because um i watched the bidding on his products everything was on auction started at one dollar and went up to about three thousand five hundred dollars mm -hmm. so i was like okay so that's where the market is for this watch right now is what i realized plus in the u.s taxes blah 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 but even though it technically sold, the next day it was relisted. All three of his watches mm. were relisted, which then meant he didn't get enough. He has a second eBay account and he's shill bidding on his own things to make sure yeah, that's that he gets so, the correct amount. That's not amount. so easy anymore if you want to do that it, because you still have then to pay all the fees. And no, all no, no. You stuff. report it as no because you immediately report it as unpaid. Mm. I've had this before where within a matter of seconds, so I had a, 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 this was not a watch. It was a different thing. Um, I was bidding on something. And then at the very last moment I was outbid. Then whenever it's outbid, you have an option. You find out immediately what the previous person's max bid was. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you send them an offer and say, you can have it for your maximum bid. Right. And this happened to me and it was within a matter of seconds of the auction closing, mm. which means the person who bid it knew it was them because they didn't even give the person, you know, a minute to pay. And I'm guessing this is exactly what happened in this case as well, which is also mm. extremely sketchy. Yeah. So these are the kinds of things I would like to avoid. But the guy was only selling a few items. They were all Hodinkee products. And in the past he had sold only Hodinkee products. So it was kind of sketchy. Then I went over to another, to Chrono, which is another big platform for those that don't know. Um, and there I found another, let's say, 10 of these watches listed. Um, half of them, I think Japanese people either price their watches too cheap or too expensive. Not sure why. Uh, but I've noticed they're either very cheap or they're very much over, you know, overpriced. Um, yeah, I think this is this is two things. You have to look at that because most of the watches for sale in Chrono 24 and for uh, Japan that are listed from Japan are only for export. That means there's no taxes on them. 
if you uh, have somebody who sells watches also to Japanese people via this platform, then there will be expensive. taxes in it. So that means because that explains at... this twenty percent different different. So no, it was not twenty. It was it was a hundred percent. Well, that's a bit. So much. all the Japanese yeah. sellers were selling the Grand Seiko for eight thousand dollars. Well, everyone else was around four. Mm. So that's why I didn't get. But nonetheless, ignoring those, um, I found a seller who had it. I always make sure that it's a dealer. I want a dealer with proper feedback. You can look at what they've sold in the past. You can look at their current inventory. Um, one thing that kind of sketched me out about the dealer I did buy from, we'll see if I was right or wrong about it, was they didn't have any expensive watches. Generally, their most expensive watch was $1,000. And this was mm. almost four. So it was four times the price of everything else they sold. So they generally sold things in the range of PRXs and things like this. It was a US dealer out of New Jersey. So if that means anything, I don't know. The, but here's the thing it made up for in communication. Yeah. They were extremely good with communication, nonstop communication. I asked for millions of pictures. They sent me anything I wanted a picture of, which meant they had it in hand. Mm. And that was, of course, you know, good. I asked for pictures of the warranty paperwork, all kinds of weird stuff. And then they shipped it. Uh, so let's see what happens. And remember, on Chrono, you don't pay until, or they don't get paid until the watch is received. Correct, yeah. And you, Which you're means, basically receiving the watch saying everything is as described and then Chrono will release the payment to the seller. Same as in exactly. eBay, yeah. by the way. No. eBay doesn't have this anymore. No? Not anymore? eBay, the, the right. seller gets paid right away and uh, they just still have their ability to take back the money. Mm. So uh, eBay doesn't have any any... What's it called? Uh, escrow. What's that? Escrow. Uh, there used to be escrow services in eBay. Not anymore. Okay. Um, but anyway, point of story is these are very minute level details I looked at in these sellers, right? Would a normal person care if they had only sold cheaper mm. watches? Not really. Yeah. Because by the way, they had sold to UAE. You look at where the person that's buying is from because you could see their reviews, right? Where they're from, what country they had sold to UAE a number of times, which meant they know the process, mm -hmm. so forth and so forth. And they only had very positive reviews, which then meant. Yeah. So I think, I think for, for absolute first time buyer, we can now summarize to say buy from either an authorized dealer, so I mean, a, a boutique, a shop. A department store, a mall? I would say go to the boutique. This is what for a first time buyer, go to a boutique and get something you can ask for a discount. Mm. But that's where I would live if I was yes. in that time. O always ask buyer. for a discount. The worst thing that can happen is that they say no. <laughs> yeah, and then you exactly. can just buy for the full price. The, or, or there's also sometimes ways where you can just say like, okay, can you throw something in, you know? Maybe you get a, a baseball cap from the brand or something else. Yeah. Just little things. Always nice to ask. It's it, it doesn't Agreed. hurt. So you can do that. But so be friendly. Be friendly. Don't 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 demand, don't demand anything. things. So just be always nice. There's, these are all yeah. humans in in sales, and they they also the uh, they um, yeah they deserve to be treated properly as well. And the nicer you are, the more likely you get something. <laughs> exactly so mm -hmm. that's number one I, if I was a new time buyer I would go there secondly if I was a new time buyer I would go to reputable dealers yes um, reputable dealers. second hand dealers mm -hmm. or gray market Joma shop you know once again go go check out what the reviews say about these places before you, know, you buy anything it can be them, tricky right? sometimes right so I'm not saying that Joma shop is bad but you, you can also have issues you can have issues for example you can if have you issues have a, from anywhere if you have a warranty issue let's say with yoma shop they then might do the warranty for you if you're no, outside the country they it's do. not so easy because yeah you have, you have to, to send ship the them back to watch them instead of going to the um to the brand locally so once again for lower priced items i wouldn't care yeah um or if that's the only way you can buy the watch mm. Right? Then then those are fine. But then others Especially like the if it's super cheap. 1916 company, the watch finders, all of these guys, um, the, 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 the pre-owned dealers that are around for decades that have a reputation, 
local shops that you know they are there for for a long time you can go there i think these are these are yeah don't don't go to <laughs> Too, eBay from uh, the very obscure beginning. Obscure <laughs> and too um, risky, right? Don't meet in a dark parking parking garage <laughs> at midnight with, yeah. with 50,000 dirhams in cash. You know, the thing is, I've done everything you probably shouldn't do before. I've met people in a sketchy place <laughs> at night uh, with a bunch of cash on me. I've done all kinds of things that I probably shouldn't have done. But in the UAE, it's, it's a lot safer. We have mm -hmm. to remember, yes. this is not the US. This is not London. Most likely, by the way, did you hear about this? Uh, there was in London, the guy who was selling a GMT Master 2. No. Yeah, he was selling it on Facebook Marketplace. Some guy made an offer. He said, okay, let's meet up. They meet up in a cafe and the guy just steals the watch and runs away. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's middle of the day, London. Yeah. So you got to be really, really Oh man, yeah. So you think days. you do everything right. So... <laughs> <laughs> nah, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. But anyway, point of story: yeah. stick to your guns, right? Yeah. Or, Especially or better yet, find someone you know, find a friend who you trust that knows watches, and then ask them to help you because that's what I did for my friends. And uh, yeah, you know, we ended up getting him the watch. He got it about half of retail price, which I think is a fantastic deal, and he's super happy with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The downside of this is, if anything goes wrong, they most likely will blame you as the watch friend. Yeah, that's that's of Which course. I don't like that. <laughs> so yeah, always. Um, that's what I'm saying. As a first time buyer, just stick with the, with the non risky things, um, and also think about what you what you want to have. If it's something that you you know is is, is very cheap on the pre owned market, then, then you might want to look at that. But then again, there's a risk free version or very low risk version, and there is the high risk version. So if you're not yet very, you know good at that you didn't have a couple of uh, transactions on your uh, on your side then i would recommend to just be with a low risk yeah just you you might spend more but you end up peace of mind gaining peace of mind and maybe saving money if your other watch ended up being fake yeah exactly and on this bombshell yep yep <laughs> we end the episode time for today to end and hope that you will get your first watch safely and be happy. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.